Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome back to the growth stage as part of the Tame Live weekly event. My name is Andrew Rouson, and I am your host for this session. We're going to have a very, very exciting and informative session about Amazon, Amazon advertising, best practices, do's and don'ts. And I'm going to introduce Srineth Reddy, who is the CEO of IntentRise, and he will talk you through uh, some, some advice, some quick cheats, and also how his technology platform will help you to embrace Amazon advertising. This day is sponsored by Econ Motors, and they are a fusion of technology and people in order to provide a full end-to-end -end solution for car parts, aftermarket sellers on marketplaces. I'm the, I'm the head of services of uh, Econ Motors, and it's my great pleasure to introduce Svenef Reddy. Um, give you a bit of background about Svenef. He is the co-founder and CEO of IntentWise. It is an Amazon advertising solution technology provider, and it empowers advertisers on Amazon with the right tools, insights, and expertise needed to outcompete and drive growth. The powerful technology platform combines the simplicity of use and a robust recommendation engine to help advertisers take advantage of every available opportunity on Amazon. It provides personalized and state-of-the-art customer service to support brands, sellers, and agencies worldwide. And their platform manages over $100 million of advertising each year. I would encourage you to ask questions. Please, please, please put them into the uh, uh, Totem chat box and we will come to them at the end. But as you remember them, please, please ask those questions. This session is for you to get what you want out of it. So it is really important that you ask questions as you come uh, through the presentation. So that leads me to hand over to Sanef and get him to tell you all about Amazon sponsored ads and the intent wise platform. Thank you. Andrew, thanks for, uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for the, for that introduction. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. It's about where I am. It's about seven 30 in the morning. So I've had to get some caffeine help to get this going. Uh, so for those of you listening in, I, um, you know, today's topic obviously is Amazon sponsored ads. Hopefully you can all see my screen. Um, in terms of agenda for today's topic, you know, we, uh, what I'm gonna do is talk a little bit about current state of Amazon ads, share some stats. I will also do a quick review of the different ad formats uh, that are available to you. And then we'll really get into the meat of today's conversation, which is uh, how do you be successful at it? What are the key enablers? What are some pitfalls? And then like Andrew mentioned, uh, we'll have some time for Q&A at the end. So that's the game plan for this session. And uh, you know, before I jump in, just a little bit about IntentWise, Andrew already mentioned who we are. Um, so yes, so we, we are a technology platform really geared to help advertisers make the most out of Amazon ads. And the part of the reason why I'm here talking about Amazon ads is because you know, we see such a breadth of advertisers and we have sizable ad spend going through the platform, uh, both on search advertising as well as DSP, uh, that it does give us a unique vantage point to be able to share some learnings with you all. So very quickly, we are an Amazon advertising technology partner. We support 14 different countries today, um, you know, with spend in triple digit millions going through the platform and growing. And, you know, again, like I mentioned, we support DSP as well as search advertising on Amazon. Today's topic, though, is really about um, uh, search advertising on Amazon. A little bit on Amazon ads, if you've been watching their earnings closely. Uh, 2020, they uh, ended uh, at close to about 22 billion in, in ad revenue. Uh, 2021. Q1 was monster, monstrous for them. So they, they saw 70 plus percent ad revenue growth uh, in the first quarter of this year. So my, my guess would be that they'll probably be north of 30 billion this year. 
And the point of all this is, uh, you know, most most uh, most uh, companies selling on marketplaces, selling on Amazon, almost don't have a choice but to, uh, you know, have a play in Amazon ads, and which has become a key driver for overall growth of sales in Amazon. A quick, uh, when we say Amazon ads, like what are these ads? So I'm going to walk you through a quick review of the different ad formats. Um, and so for that, uh, let me just switch screens and that may be easier and show you, go to Amazon and actually show you on the Amazon site what the different ad formats are. Um, the So here I am searching for vacuum cleaners. Um, and uh, the one of the thing, first things you see at the top right here, uh, that is called what's called sponsored brand uh, ads. So that's that's one ad format, sponsored brands. As you surf through, you will see links that are uh, sponsored within the search results. That's sponsored products. Okay, so sponsored brands, sponsored products. And if you were to click into any of these products and go into the detail page, on the detail page, you see a ton of ads as well. Um, so this right here, this ad unit is sponsored brand. This ad unit to the side, that's called sponsored display. I'll get into more details in each of these, but remember, just keep the high level names in mind. Sponsored brand, sponsored display, and down below uh, where you see sponsored, this is again sponsored products, okay? So sponsored products, sponsored brands, and sponsored display. Those are the three broad campaign types that are supported by search ads. And <clears throat> for sponsored products, uh, sp sponsor products, you can target audiences uh, uh, three ways, right? You can target specific searches by consumers, for instance, vacuum cleaners in this case. You can target specific products, which is you could be targeting your own products or competitor products to show your ads on. Um, and in the case of sponsored products, there's another targeting option, which is what's called auto, often used in early stage of advertising, where you tell Amazon, here's my products, and Amazon decides where to show your ads. So sponsored products has keywords, products, and auto targeting options. Sponsored brands has keywords and products as your options. But sponsored display, which is a relatively new format, is something different, which is you can target specific products, but you could also target audiences, such as in-market audiences. <clears throat> Amazon lets you target people that are shopping for something, or lifestyle audiences, or demographic audiences, or you can even remarket, which is people who have seen your products, you can go back and target them. So sponsored display is new, um, an exciting ad format, so those are the three ad formats. So let me switch back to my um, PowerPoint here. Again, quickly, sponsor products has three different ways to target people. Sponsor brands has two, and sponsor display has a couple. <clears throat> so those are the three different campaigns types and the associated targeting options you have. Now, if you look at what's happening, um, the number of levers you have and the different ad options you have is just continuing to grow. So if I were to put myself in an advertiser's shoe, a few things um, stand out, which is Amazon is the fastest growing digital ad channel today. It is complex and competitive, and it's increasingly complex and competitive. Uh, and it does consume time to be managing it. That's the current environment for advertisers. So the question then becomes, how do you um, succeed uh, in, in, in such an environment? And that's where we jump right into uh, what we're going to talk about today, which is what truly is a recipe for success uh, on, on Amazon ads. For us, um, we think about um, this in kind of five key ways, right? So. Um, targeting uh, the right shoppers, managing bids on those targets very efficiently, knowing what competition is doing because that has a huge bearing on what happens to you, 
the ability to rapidly analyze and diagnose performance issues if you have any uh, and then because Amazon you know I, I, I jokingly always say the only thing constant about Amazon is change right so change itself so because Amazon adds changes so much there's a need to continuously experiment so it is about getting these five pieces working together cohesively uh, that's where we see success lies and the, the advertisers that are um, you know doing this well um, get these five pieces uh, right um, and I'm going to peel the layers and dig into each of those pieces so let's start with targeting um, so when it comes to targeting um, again just to quickly summarize you've got keywords products and audience um, as mechanisms to target folks uh, by each of the campaign types interestingly enough over time Amazon what used to be a keyword a targeting driven ad platform what is common now across the board is actually product targeting meaning targeting whether it's competitor products or your own products so that's the most common targeting type but in terms of characteristics of getting targeting right I want to call out a few things one it is what who you target is never static the idea is you need to have the discipline and the practice to continuously increase the long tail of products and the keywords you target so in that context um, you know I, one thing to note is Amazon actually shares with you the actual searches and the actual products on which your ads have been shown so um, an important practice to have is to constantly uh, be leveraging the auto campaigns which are really discovery campaigns that tell you a hey, what searches are working what products are working for targeting and moving those into manual campaigns so you can get more precise and gain a lot more control on what you bid and what your return or a cost is uh, on um, on those targets so uh, auto to manual campaign uh, shift and then the second one I would say is constantly shifting spend from broad to phrase to exact match keywords you know if 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 broad phrase exact don't make sense to you there's a notion called match type that is supported by most ad platforms um, and I can be happy to share more details later if you want to reach out to me with a question but the idea is broad uh, as it says targets broad uh, search intents that helps you discover more and more narrow search intents that are working for your products and you shift them to phrase and exact so continuous expansion of long tail is kind of my main point it has to be a common practice the second common practice is as you have noticed before there's a lot of commonality in targeting types between campaigns right so sponsor brand sponsor product sponsor display you have to constantly leverage what is working in one in the other most advertisers don't do that uh, necessarily very well but that is another practice that I'd recommend you have and the third piece is you have to constantly experiment with what new search intents or what new products should you be targeting and that's the only way you're going to expand your universe over time so uh, that also becomes a critical aspect of getting targeting right on the topic of targeting uh, product targeting I like I mentioned that product targeting which is you target specific products detail pages um, has become the com the most common targeting option you have and we uh, recommend that you think about that in two ways one is offensive product targeting which is to go after uh, uh, competitor products um, and two is defensive product targeting to go after your own products uh, of course competitor products uh, you know you could do that would go drive incremental sales it helps to be looking at organic search result data to really figure out who you want to target um, and then from a defensive targeting standpoint that often helps when you are either upselling or cross-selling your own products to your existing customers um, or you want to defend against competition occupying your product detail pages so that's on targeting um, and the uh, uh, the next thing uh, in our recipe that I talked about is bid management so bid management um, the um, first of all 
let me say that when it comes to your products, you know, we'd like to think about product life cycle stages in, in, uh, as, 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 as three stages. You know, products can be new, products can be mature, and products can be obsolete. The performance expectation at each of these stages has to be different. And, you know, you have to have the right expectation at each of these stages. So let me kind of uh, elaborate on what I mean by that. When products are relatively new, uh, you have to operate to a higher A cost, uh, and you are constantly experimenting with who do you target, what search intents do you target, cast a wide net, and also keep a close eye on your overall organic ranking and total A cost. Uh, by the way, um, if you um, if if A cost doesn't mean anything to you, it is very simply average cost of sales, which is spend divided by revenue lower the A cost, the better usually. It is the inverse of uh, a common advertising term called ROAS, return on ad spend. So A cost is an inverse of ROAS, it's an Amazon thing. Um, but what I want to say is having higher target A cost and driving up sales velocity, keeping an eye on organic ranking is what the focus is when the products are new. But when they're in a mature state, uh, you can then focus on fine-tuned bidding and operate to a lower A cost. And of course, when it's obsolete, you know, you're just trying to get rid of inventory there, you know, your goal is, you know, stay margin neutral and, um, and you know, uh, get through your inventory. So point being, depending on the stage of your product, you just have to manage it to different target, uh, um, target A costs uh, and some of the tactics vary. Another thing I want to say about bidding, and this comes up all the time, which is, you know, um, there are advertisers who manually manage bids, changing bids one at a time in a given day when they have time. But there's also quite a few advertisers that leverage automation. And automation, uh, there are two forms of automation when it comes to bid management. One is a rules-based bid management. The other is machine learning-based bid management. Let me uh, tease out the difference with a couple of specific examples. Uh, in a rules-based uh, automation uh, mechanism, what you're doing is you have predefined conditions that you're just automating. So, for example, you could say, hey, if my A cost on certain keywords is between 20 to 30 percent, reduce my bids by 10 percent. That's a predefined logic. All you're doing is automating it. Okay. Machine learning-based automation is one where you have a predictive model, statistical model, that takes historic data and any other any data you have as inputs and predicts the right bid to achieve your target. The target could be whatever the target is. Target could be ACOS. So you're letting the machine figure out the patterns and coming up come up with predictions. So in automated bid management, keep in mind that there's that distinction: rules versus machine learning. My recommendation to you is if you're doing manual is, is really to move from left to right. So if you're managing this entirely manually uh, in today's day and age to stay competitive, uh, I would advise against that. Leverage some form of automation, right? Whether it's rules or machine learning. And if you're leveraging rules and you have sizable spends, uh, I would recommend you move towards machine learning uh, based bid management. Uh, the differences between the two being, you know, with rules-based bid management, it's it's predefined, it's executing your logic. Um, it's not necessarily great when you have a whole bunch of keywords that don't have enough data, uh, when the data is sparse. Uh, it also doesn't account for elasticities in bids um, uh, versus your machine learning model can actually take into account non-linearities, elasticities in bids and machine learning uh, techniques exist today to deal with keywords with sparse data. So my headline message to you on this is if you aren't leveraging automation, you really have to think about that. And if you are leveraging automation and you have growing amount of spend that you're trying to manage, uh, think about rules versus machine learning based automation. And by the way, from an intent wise platform perspective, we actually offer both forms of automation, um, just FYI. <clears throat> so that's on bidding. Let's talk about tracking competition. Um, the one of the fascinating things that I find all the time with uh, in my client conversations is, 
you know, when I ask them, like, who are your competitors? I hear some names, but when I show them who are they competing with, there's always a surprise, actually lots of surprises. So one of the things I highly recommend for uh, anyone that's, um, you know, doing advertising today is you really have to know who your competition, what your competition is, um, ideally at the product level. And knowing what changes are happening competitively, for instance, you know, did you lose a bestseller badge? Uh, did someone drop price drastically? Uh, those are the types of things that you want to keep an eye on because that actually has a direct bearing on advertising. And the reason why it's important to track this stuff is because your advertising data doesn't tell you what comp what competitive changes happen. So in order to explain what is going on or understand what's going on, it's actually important to track uh, competition. It's also, of course, important to track competition so you can leverage it in product targeting as well. Um, but this is, this is a critical activity, especially now um, where you have new competition coming up all the time in every category. Uh, we certainly have the... Uh, tools to enable you to do that and there's lots of options out there but it is a critical uh, piece of the puzzle rapid diagnostics so that's another thing I have uh, uh, I have, you know I've, uh, that I talked about as, uh, as a critical activity um, what do I mean by this what I mean by this is for anyone running ads uh, one of the most challenging questions comes down to performance questions. I mean, if you're running ads, you know, you could you could have a boss, you could have a client, uh, you know, and, you know, my ACOS is up, why? Or my revenue is down, why? Uh, that you should expect uh, as a constant situation or a question that's going to come at you if you're someone that's running ads. The important thing, though, is to have a structured, repeatable process to troubleshoot performance. Uh, and for those of you uh, watching, um, I um, uh, there is in our showcase, I uploaded a webinar, a video uh, that deep dives into just this topic about how to uh, take a methodical approach um, and uh, in the process, save yourself a ton of headache and time. And also when you are able to control, not control, but have a, a structured approach to this, you know, you, you gain a lot of confidence from people around you as well. So, um, so yeah, yeah. So point being, have a rigorous structured process. Um, look at our video. Uh, what we recommend is what we call, uh, um, you know, a, a, a progressive drill down, meaning uh, you want to look at spend, revenue, and ACOS metrics across different segments within your advertising account, which is start at the account level, drill down into campaign types, campaigns, products, targets. And as you go through that, you will notice a storyline develops and you're able to spot areas of problems very, very quickly. Without this, it's just very painful trying to answer that question. Uh, and to stay competitive, you have to be good at this. And I have a 30 minute rule on this. In 30 minutes, you may not be able to identify the cause, but you should be able to identify all the problem areas that are driving that underperformance. Experimentation was another <clears throat> um, uh, uh, another important area, and let's get into that a little bit. Like I said before, the the only thing that's constant about not only thing, but one of the things that's constant about Amazon is change itself. And so what I recommend is that with your advertising budgets, a small sliver of your budget should be set aside for experimentation, experimenting with a new feature that Amazon would have introduced, right? So for instance, their latest thing is they have uh, really expanded audience targeting under sponsored display. So you could target lifestyles in market, uh, demographic based audiences. Um, but it is important to have a little bit of budget dedicated to experimentation. It is important to have a, um, a structured roadmap. We call them iterations. Maybe it's every two weeks, maybe it's every month. 
but and then adopt a philosophy of really like fail fast and and apply what you've learned um, and yeah so i think experimentation is key um, of course you can't run too many at once then you don't have enough data to uh, reach any conclusions um, but yeah experiment have a roadmap fail fast apply what works and keep moving Yeah, so I think the, um, the, the, like I, you know, right at the beginning of this presentation, I talked about um, the recipe for success, which is these five pieces. But in order for these five pieces to work, um, there's a couple of key enablers, right? One is a process, or I'd like to call it a daily discipline, um, or a daily grind, <laughs> if I were to, uh, if I were to, you, you know, uh, the, the, the thing with Amazon ads is there's a lot of ideas, right? And I do not believe that the advertisers that are doing this well is because they have lots and lots of great ideas. I believe it is largely because of the process discipline they have in place. Um, and uh, on, on a daily basis. And I'll get into that in a bit more detail on my next slide. But I would say the two key enablers are process and technology slash automation. So let me dig into the process bit a little bit. And um, I know this is a messy slide, but what you're seeing in front of you is a simple, uh, I shouldn't say simple, a, an operational checklist that we actually hand out to our clients as a suggested base template to start from that calls out specific things to be doing and the different cadences and the frequencies. So daily, weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. For any of you that is interested in getting a PDF, clean PDF version of this, just send me a message um, or connect with us in our showcase uh, and we'll get you a PDF over. Um, and so, um, but I, I, we believe it is important to have a checklist like this uh, that is socialized in your team and you're executing to it because there's a lot of little pieces that you want to um, you want to be paying attention to. So this is what I mean: a standard operating checklist that you're going to stick to and perhaps tweak a little bit based on your specific needs, but you need to have one. Okay, that's the key point. When it comes to uh, technology. The, um, the, the a few key areas where technology and automation has a big impact, and again, you know, internet-wise platform helps you do a, uh, do all of these. Uh, one, of course, is bid management. If you're doing this manually today, please stop. Right, so leverage automation. <clears throat> of course, um, you know, uh, bid management is not you know what, let me set something and forget about it. It does, no matter what platform you use, uh, leverage automation, but verify and monitor, okay? But that's a big area where um, technology and automation plays a big role. Harvesting new keywords and product targets. Again, that's another area where you can introduce a ton of automation, where you could be leveraging search terms working for you in let's say sponsored product campaigns, auto campaigns into sponsored product manual campaigns, sponsored brand campaigns, um, and even sponsored display campaigns. So you can really automate that. This is one area that <clears throat> if you don't leverage automation, things fall behind a lot. And, uh, and then like I mentioned before, continuous expansion of long tail of targets is a critical piece of getting this right. So that's another area where automation can be super valuable. Tracking competitive intelligence. <clears throat> um, yeah, I mean, I've talked about this before. This can't be done, you know, manually. Um, again, we, within our platform, we're able to, you know, help you track, um, you know, who shows up on organic rank for what keywords, <clears throat> what is their content quality, so on and so forth. Reach out to us if you want to chat more about that, but that's another important piece. And then custom reporting and visualization. And, you know, 
almost everyone uh, in the space struggles with this because the advertising data and the sales data, these are all fragmented and you have to download and put these things together. So automation there could be super valuable. <clears throat> we at IntentWise have invested quite a bit in simplifying that. You know, we have simplified the process of collecting all kinds of Amazon data as well as reporting and visualizing on top. We have connectors into Google Data Studio, Excel and Tableau and so on and so forth. But I'd say these are the four areas that you can um, uh, can I have the biggest impact with leveraging technology and automation. The um, moving forward, um, I think uh, one of the things I wanted to share in today's conversation is Again, you know, we we have uh, we look at so many accounts on a monthly basis, um, and we, by the way, for anyone that comes onto the platform, we do a complimentary account audit. Uh, for any of you that's interested in that, again, reach out to us. We'd be happy to do that for you. Uh, but what we see is a common pattern of, let's say, common mistakes that can be avoided. And I'll share with you the top five that we see. Um, number one is a significant amount of ad spend is going into auto campaigns, right? So uh, while auto campaigns as a starting point is okay, but they're meant for you, for you to discover what works and move them into manual campaigns. And only when you move them into manual campaigns, do you have fine grain control on bidding? Uh, so it is super important that you constantly move that spend over from auto to manual campaigns. When I see auto campaigns taking up 40, 50, 60% of spend, that's huge missed opportunity. Second, missing products in campaigns. And this happens all the time, as simple as that sounds. Um, especially if you have a large catalog, right? It's easy for these five or 10 ASINs to be missing from certain campaigns. Um, and you know, that's again, missed opportunity. The IntentWise platform detects those scenarios automatically and surfaces those for you, but that's another common mistake. The third one is this lack of proper segmentation between brand versus non-brand. So, you know, uh, let's say I am, uh, let's pick a brand, Apple, right? So if I have a campaign that has keywords with Apple in it, as well as generic keywords like mobile phone and uh, headphones, right? So you've mixed in brand and non-brand into the same campaign. Brand keywords obviously will perform way better than non-brand when it comes to ACoS. And now you've got this mixed up uh, situation where you can't really tease out what truly is my non-brand performance versus brand performance. And our belief is that non-brand keywords, non-brand products is what drives incremental sales for you. So it is super important that you maintain clear separation in the account structure and truly manage your account to non-brand metrics, okay, to drive incremental sales. The fourth piece, which is, this is <clears throat> uh, automation gone haywire, where I see uh, a lot of, um, automated negative matching and negative matching as in uh, you can add keywords or products targets as negative so that your ads don't appear for any searches that contain those. Problem with that is if you get too aggressive with it, you could inadvertently be killing your shopping funnel, shopper funnel, right? So, and there's no way to know that. So I would be cautious about aggressive negative matching. From our perspective, I much rather we much rather you manage it by adjusting bids and lowering bids on things that are not working. The last point uh, is the last thing I want to cover is that when I see an account that has way more money going into broad match uh, keywords versus exact and phrase, again, that's a problem. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the in the presentation, continuously moving keywords from broad to exact and phrase is an important practice. But this is another common mistake we see. I'd like to call these as common, but uh, uh, sorry, simple, common, but high impact mistakes that I, do, that I, do, I would avoid. Our list is pretty long, but I wanted to call out the things that kind of have the biggest impact and have also 
been occurring quite a bit um, as we observe it in our audit process. Um, so with that, um, I want to bring this back to um, you know where I started, which is getting these five pieces right uh, is where success lies. And like I mentioned before, the two enablers for these are uh, having the right process. <clears throat> and again, feel free to reach out. Um, I'll share my contact info in a moment. We'd be happy to share with you an operational checklist. And uh, also having the right technology and automation. Uh, so process and technology are the key enablers uh, of these five pieces of what we call the recipe for success. Yeah, so my contact info is here. You can reach me at srinath at internwise.com. Um, and uh, Andrew, uh, you know, yeah. perhaps we can open this up for questions. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much, Srinath. And uh, that was very uh, informative. I know it's a big, big area. And this is the opportunity for people to ask questions now. Uh, if we've kind of just touched on a little bit of the areas that's interest you or we haven't uh, gone through that. But let me kick off with uh, the first one. What are your tips on the best ways to keep track of competitor changes? Yeah, so I think the, there's two aspects to it, right? One is uh, collecting appropriate information. Um, and two is, uh, you know, what do you want to, uh, what do you want to ch track in terms of changes? There's some obvious ones, right? Badging changes, pricing changes, uh, so on and so forth. So there's, you know, uh, there's tools out there, frankly, I mean, I, I, you know, the internet platform itself can do a lot of that. Um, so what we do, I can talk about what we do for sure here, which is for a given list of keywords, we're able to track who is ranking where, what's happening to them, you know, whether it's pricing, badging, reviews, so on and so forth. So happy to discuss this more, but ultimately it just boils down to for the searches and the keywords that matter to your products, you've got to be collecting information that shows you where you rank, and what are the attributes of competitors? And I'll also say one more thing, which is um, competition is not at your company level. It is actually at your product level. You know, for each set of products, you have a different set of competitors. So just keep that in mind too, you know? Um, uh, and then the last thing I want to say is we talked about product targeting throughout this conversation. How do you choose who, who you target? That's also another reason why you have to be tracking this stuff, right? So, um, yeah, so happy to chat more offline, but uh, that, that's what I have got for now. Great. Uh, thank you for that. Um, another question that's come in, um, it, you mentioned early on in your presentation about Amazon making the rules. How do you keep up with the rules and understand what works worked this week will work next week or next year, if that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, the reality is this. So I think that the, the I shouldn't say rules, but the dynamics of uh, what happens in these auctions is constantly changing. Ad formats are changing. Competition is changing. The sophistication of your competition is changing too. Um, it's almost a discipline that needs organizational focus uh, and the tools to be good at it, right? So uh, the way I see it, like you don't have a choice but to invest in building expertise, <laughs> invest in a process, which by the way has to keep adjusting, uh, and absolutely invest in technology to stay ahead. Like, uh, so th those are the three things. And like, I also made the point about experimentation and I'm, uh, that's actually a critical part of this, which is so many changes are coming at us that both in terms of resources and time, there has to be a sliver allocated to just learning how to deal with something new that has come at you. There is no choice. <laughs> 
right? So, um, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I absolutely agree with that. I think the great opportunity about marketplaces is it gives you an audience, um, yeah. a box. Um, however, you've got to live and die by the rules of those marketplaces. So yeah. there's a trade-off there. Um, yeah. Another question that's come in, uh, a really good question, this one is, um, so Amazon started out as some of us think it started out as a retailer. Um, and Amazon today touches our life, whether it's streaming videos, whether it, it's selling on Amazon, selling to Amazon, um, taking up their other services, and the advertising is part of that. Do you feel that the Amazon advertising is a important part of their strategy? And where do you think it's heading yeah. as well? Yeah, I mean, look, I think, see, at the, at the end, uh, great question. Um, you know, and by the way, Amazon is not the only one that is talking about ads, right? So you've got Walmart, you've got Target, you've got everybody, eBay, mm -hmm. right? Every Everybody, right? So, yeah. um, you know, obviously their prime membership you know, is a huge value prop, right? And that 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 brings their audience to their site. To me, when I think about these platforms, like when it comes to ad revenue, right? I I I, I find that ad revenue is directly tied to three attributes of an of a platform. One is traffic. <laughs> Two is how frequently that traffic shows up, and three is when they show up, how long and how much time do they spend on the platform? <laughs> And when you have those three things going, compounding, having a compounding effect on each other, that's a massive advertising opportunity. And and from a financial perspective, a lot of the revenue from this probably drops straight to the bottom line. And so to me, when you look at Amazon, Amazon is in a phenomenal place with all those three factors that I talked about. I'm sure it makes a ton of, uh, you know, adds a ton to gross margins. So. Uh, I think it's a critical strategy. What I always wonder, though, is uh, there is a balance, right, uh, which is ad revenue versus shopping experience. And and that's always tricky, and I'm sure they're running a ton of experiments to get that balance right. Uh, so uh, where that ends up, certainly on the search advertising side, in my mind, I think of it as there is a ceiling, right, because beyond which you're going to degrade shopping experience. So, but then you've got DSP, which is the, the, the whole demand side platform where Amazon lets you target their audiences. And that is an option available, not just to people selling on Amazon, uh, but everybody else. So, I mean, so that that's a huge uh, opportunity unto itself. Uh, and the key asset that Amazon is leveraging in all of that is its audiences. Um, so yeah, I think it's important. I think it makes a lot of money for them. They have some things to figure out when it comes to the balance with shopping experience on their site, but they they also have this display advertising option that's growing quite a bit. And uh, that I, you know, it's I think it's in early stages. Okay, fantastic. That that's great insight there. Um, we've got just under ten minutes left, so please, please, please put your questions in there. We'll try and get round to all of them as, as uh, during this this next ten minutes. Got another question that's come in. Um, as a seller on Amazon, um, I already pay Amazon fees to sell on there. And now I feel like I'm being pushed down the road where if I don't have, use their advertising platform, I, you know, I'm going to reduce my sales. Is yeah. that, do you think that is reality or do you feel, um, you know, it, you will get sales that you wouldn't have already got if you embrace the advertising aspect? Uh, yeah, I mean, to me, um, the, I mean, the, so the, the, all, the, the whole seller side costs, uh, outside of advertising is not a realm that I, uh, operate in too much, but I'll tell you, I'll speak to advertising for sure, which is, yeah. um, absolutely. There are the, the, there Amazon, you can manage your ad spin in a way that your exposure of your products is truly incremental. The sales you drive through ad spend is truly incremental. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, I mean, I think there's a way, uh, not there's a way, there, there's clearly a path to managing Amazon ads that has a truly incremental impact on your business. And frankly, 
uh, a certain amount of advertising at this point is table stakes. Like, you know, otherwise, I mean, you look at your mobile phone and you see how much real estate the ads occupy versus organic. Uh, you almost don't have a choice. So, so the answer is yes, I do believe you can drive incremental sales from it. Uh, today, like it or not, uh, I feel like you almost don't have a choice. Uh, and, you know, the, there's a part about Amazon ads that actually any ads that I personally am not a big fan of, and I've had this challenge with Google as well, which is uh, one brand bidding on another brand's uh, keywords, yeah. right? Yeah. And there is that happening too. Even if you don't advertise, someone comes in and advertises on, on, your, on, your, on your brand or trademark term. So what are you going to do? Uh, you got to defend. So, um, so yeah, uh, I think it's in a bit it's stable stakes, but I do think there's a way to really manage this to drive incremental impact. Um, do you see? Um, actually, actually, this is a question for me. Actually, um, yeah. Do you see um, that a lot of um, sponsors ads are being presented that don't relate to the keyword search? So I'll give you an example. of This I was looking for a Wi-Fi camera just recently, yeah. and the sponsor, you know, most of them bang on, but some of them, when I click through, it wasn't Wi-Fi, it was network, it, was, it wasn't it yeah. was what I was looking for. Do you yeah. see that, and is that uh, is that improving, those, those that, that kind of algorithm? Yeah, I mean, yeah, to me, part of this, I mean, are you talking about, uh, I guess the question I would have is, are you talking about the organic results, or are you talking about ads no. that were shown? Ads, ads, ads. and not yeah, necessarily so, the organic. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I mean, um, not not having seen the specific use case, my suspicion is um, that uh, there's quite a bit of spend that goes into what's called a broad match type today, right? So if I'm if I'm selling cameras with Wi-Fi, and if I'm buying ads on broad match keyword that says camera, of course you you know you're going to show up for all kinds of searches. So um, I think part of that may just be uh, the choice of keywords that people are buying and the match type they're using. That's part of the reason why earlier in the presentation, I was talking about the importance of continuing to shift dollars from broad to exact and phrase so that when that consumer searches that exact search and your products are relevant and show up versus you showing up for searches that are not relevant to you, they click, they don't convert and you're spending, it's wasted money. So in large part, I would assume it is just the execution of the advertising, to be honest with you. Um, uh, well, and that therein lies the opportunity also, which is uh, continuously keeping an eye on the relevance of, because Amazon searches the, uh, shares the search data with you. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, no, I understand that. We've got a couple of minutes just left and I just wanna um, try and slip in a couple more questions. So let's, 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 let's be quick at this one. At what point does automation become important? So using uh, a tool such as yours rather than yeah. doing it manually in the back end of the platform? Look, I think that unless you have really tiny, tiny spend with a handful of keywords and even that, or you can benefit from automation, like they are, it's the inverse, right? So there's very few situations where today automation should not be part of your equation. So uh, maybe not everything on all aspects, but certainly bid management, tracking competitors, right? So uh, very early, very <laughs> in your in your evolution, you should be leveraging automation. Fantastic. Um, and then one quick last question: Does geography matter? So Europe, US. Asia in the respect of how you approach the different territories? Yeah, I think the uh, consumer searches are different for the same products we notice, right? So um, also I would say that there are some differences and gaps in capabilities. Amazon doesn't roll out capabilities to all marketplaces on, on the, at the get-go. So there's a need to understand those uh, gaps in, uh, as well. Um, but I would say the actual uh, tactics to manage ads are fairly similar, uh, but consumer searches, shopping patterns, seasonality, and actual ad features, there are certainly differences. Great. Fantastic. Thank you very much for that and for that insight. I certainly learned a lot 
uh, on that presentation. Um, we've had a lot of requests to share that presentation. Um, sure. And I'm sure if you could do that as part of that, and this video will be available uh, on the Tame Bay platform after the event as well. So sure. um, that's great. And, and I really appreciate your time and going through quite a, a big area um yeah so um so yeah so if you want to learn more about intent wise um so if is around in the networking and he's also around uh in our in the virtual booth i think that's what they call it virtual yeah booth, isn't it? showcase um, showcase it's showcase quite that's it yeah absolutely yeah. um but i'd just like to thank you for your time and okay. uh contributing towards uh growth on the on the merchant platform today Absolutely. Well, thanks so much. This was fun, and uh, enjoy the rest of the rest of the rest of the week. No problems. That's great. Thank you, Sunil. Take care. Bye. So that that leaves me uh, just to thank you all for attending um, the Merch Growth Stream or um, any of the other streams today. Um, it isn't finished though. Um, we are going across, um, my colleague over at Econ Motors will be presenting on another stage um, and talking about something as equally interesting as uh, we've talked about today. Uh, we've had IntentWise, we've had ShipStation going through how automation can help. And we've also talked about data and how it helps growth uh, on the marketplaces today. I'd like to thank our event sponsor, eBay. Uh, without sponsors, we can't make this event happen and we can't make it free for attendees. So uh, that's been awesome that uh, eBay has uh, sponsored the whole event. And the day sponsor, which is Econ Motors, which is uh, the organization I'm involved with. Um, we've been really honored to be part of this. Uh, we are hosting another day tomorrow and uh, that's more about brand. I would encourage you to, to attend um, and there'll be some insightful things there. Also presenting partners, uh, I mentioned a couple on, on my stream, but uh, eBay, Econ Motors, Channel Advisor, IntentWise, Parcel Hub, which is part of the Whistle Group and ShipStation. Again, without their insightful inputs and their advice, um, you know, if you've managed to take one or two things away from today, from any or all of them, that'll be great. The Totem platform will be remain open for an hour following the close of the sessions for networking and visiting supplier showcases. Please, please, please take some time out and visit those showcases. Uh, the suppliers have all got involved and given their, um, their experience um, in their relative areas. Ask any more questions, get contact details from there, and you can also reach out after the event. And the sessions will resume tomorrow morning at 9.45. And the Totem platform will be open for the early wisers at 8.45. Well, realistically, we're just moving probably from the bedroom to the home office, aren't we, at this moment in time? So there's not far to go unless you're actually visiting and, and being with people uh, in the normal office. So um, that's all for me for today. Uh, please visit the rest of the stages um, and you'll be led on the Totem platform to that. But I'd like to thank you all for your time and uh, attention for the different uh, uh presentations that we've had and i look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow thank you very much